Hey guys, Harris Rubenstein back at you again with a little more NBA trade deadline content. The deadline is only two weeks away, so we're going to go through a couple blockbuster trade ideas that we could see in the next couple of weeks. So, the big name that everyone wants to see traded, unless you live in Louisiana and actually care about basketball, to which that's about one, it's like four people. Anthony Davis is probably the top name who could end up getting traded at the trade deadline this year. And unironically, we think he's going to end up on the Lakers. Because as of right now, that's really the only team that A, has the assets, and B, can actually legally trade for Anthony Davis at this time and have the combination of the two. Can't be traded to the Boston Celtics because the NBA has this weird rule where you can't trade for like two top picks within two years of each other or something. It's dumb. And they have... Kyrie Irving, so therefore they can't trade for Anthony Davis. However, whatever the Lakers want to do with Anthony Davis, their package right now is not really all that inspiring. Seeing as Brandon Ingram has not been playing great basketball, Josh Hart is a nice player, but it's very clear what his ceiling is right now. And the Lakers' couple of first round picks over the next couple of years are probably going to be pretty late in the first round. So, in order to make a package for Anthony Davis, you're going to have to slam all those things together to come up with a legitimate trade sandwich for Anthony Davis. So, we're dusting off the Rubenstein trade machine. Here is what the Lakers would have to give up for Anthony Davis. They would have to give up basically all of their good young players. Ingram, Kuzma, and Josh Hart, along with two first round picks just for Anthony Davis. Now, the money would work this year, and eventually Lakers have to give Anthony Davis a pretty fat contract, but if you don't have to give money to Ingram, Kuzma, or Hart, you're kind of fine giving all your money to Anthony Davis, but if you're the Pelicans, I wonder how happy you are with that return. Do you actually take that return, or do you just wait until the NBA draft when the Celtics can literally offer you Jalen Brown, Terry Rozier, like four first round picks along with plenty of other great assets. I just don't know if the Pelicans are going to jump the gun here and actually accept the Lakers offer when they could just wait for the Celtics this offseason. But if the Lakers were able to somehow end up with Anthony Davis, I mean, it would end up being, I wonder, here's a good question. Would Anthony Davis be the best player that LeBron James has ever played with? Because the only real candidates for that would be peak Dwayne Wade when he first went off to uh, to Miami. Another player would also be peak Chris Bosh, but I think Anthony Davis is obviously a better player than Chris Bosh ever was. So it's really Anthony Davis versus peak Dwayne Wade. So let me know in the comment section below if this is the best player that LeBron has ever played with. But more importantly, I want to know, will Anthony Davis get traded at the deadline this year. The Pelicans are a mess right now. Nikola Mirotic is now down with an injury. We know Anthony Davis has missed some time with injuries this year as well. They are way down the Western Conference standings as we stand today. So if you're the Pelicans, might just be time to let Anthony Davis be free and spread his beautiful eight-foot wingspan. All right, let's talk about Bradley Beal. If the Wizards are looking to blow things up, and by the way, I promise this isn't just going to be four trades for the Lakers. You can go check out our five trades for the Lakers video that we did the other day. But Bradley Beal is another player that the Lakers could be targeting at the deadline this year. Frankly, because they're really the only team that has enough assets to make an actual run at Bradley Beal. Also, not to mention, I actually think he'd be a better fit next to LeBron James than Anthony Davis would. His playmaking ability from the two-guard spot, his ability off the catch-and-shoot, he's great in the pick-and-roll as well. He's a much better playmaker than he really does get credit for, and I think that adding him next to LeBron James, he would probably be, in the spectrum of the NBA, one of the five best players that you could legitimately put next to LeBron James that would just be a perfect fit. I mean, Klay Thompson would probably be up there. Steph Curry is up there for every single player in the NBA, so he has to be on that list as well. Bradley Beal is easily in that top five, but he would also cost a pretty penny. Not much as Anthony Davis, a little bit less, but still most of the Lakers' young core. They would definitely have to give up one of Brandon Ingram or Kyle Kuzma, maybe both if the Wizards are feeling 
uh, you know, a little bit greedy on that specific day. But Josh Hart would definitely have to go back to the Wizards in some sort of position for position trade. Kentavious Caldwell Pope would have to go back to make the money work. And then the Lakers 2019 first round pick. Because if you're the Wizards, boy, oh boy, do you need draft picks. So with Bradley Beal in tow, the Lakers would be able to have a great lineup of playmakers outside shooters and it would also allow the, their bench to really just even out a little bit more. So I think Bradley Beal would be a great fit for the Los Angeles Lakers. Again, a pretty penny and it would take them out of the hunt for Anthony Davis, but how realistic is the Lakers' pursuit of Anthony Davis in the first place? Bradley Beal just seems to make a more sense from a basketball perspective and also from an optics perspective because hell, they could just sign Anthony Davis in a couple years anyway if they really want to. But if you're looking to make some money on the NBA this year, there's only one place to do it, and that's at BetDSI. Head to chatsports.com slash bet. Use that promo code NBA120 for a 120% deposit bonus. What is a deposit bonus? Well, it's as simple as this. You deposit 100 bucks at chatsports.com slash bet. Use that promo code NBA120, and that 120% deposit bonus will give you $120 to bet with for free. Yeah, people, for free. It's the best deal that you're going to find out there. Again, chatsports.com slash bet. Thank you to BetDSI for coming along with us this NBA season. All right, let's go through a couple other blockbuster trade deadline deals that we might see this year. Let's talk about Mike Conley, the point guard for the Memphis Grizzlies, who we know that Memphis is currently shopping around. A lot of options for where Memphis could send Mike Conley, whether it's Detroit. It, Indiana was a perfect spot for him until, of course, you know, they lost Victor Oladipo. So now that's just not going to happen. Mike Conley would be a great fit for so many different teams in the NBA, whether it be the Detroit Pistons, uh, may, maybe a team, you know, uh, shipping him, excuse me, uh, to the San Antonio Spurs, who are in big need for a point guard help as well. For me, though, there's really only one team that actually makes a ton of sense for Mike Conley. Because if you're looking in spectrum of the NBA as to A, who can afford him, B, who's actually going to get the most out of Mike Conley, for me, it's the Utah Jazz. And if you're the U excuse me, if you're the Memphis Grizzlies, your sole purpose with Mike Conley is to get out from that $30 million contract that you're gonna have to pay him for the next three years. So what could be helpful? How about two expiring contracts? One in Ricky Rubio this year and one in Derek Favors next year, along with the 2019 first round pick. That'd be a good enough package to receive for Mike Conley. Maybe they want another young player. Maybe you throw a Grayson Allen in there or an Alec Burks just to kind of add a little bit of a sweetener to the deal for the Memphis Grizzlies. But if you're the Utah Jazz, you bring in Mike Conley, you have him for the next three years. All of a sudden, you have a great looking big three between Mike Conley, Donovan Mitchell, and Rudy Gobert. You still have Joe Ingles and Jay Crowder on the wing to help out. You have Kyle Korver cut off the bench for some three-point shooting. I think this would be a great move for the Utah Jazz and would really put them back in the finals hunt. Donovan Mitchell has had to carry this team for the past two seasons so far and has really started to come on the past month and a half. He needs a fellow superstar at that guard position to take off some pressure and to open up some shots from him. And Mike Conley in that position, on that team, a defensive heavy team that likes to move the ball around and likes to shoot threes, Mike Conley would be perfect for the Utah Jazz system and he'd be a great fit next to Donovan Mitchell. Last but certainly not least, let's talk about Kemba Walker, the point guard for the Charlotte Hornets. Now, I don't know why the Hornets don't want to trade him. I think they're crazy. I understand that Michael Jordan is grasping on to relevancy with this franchise with an iron fist. But Kemba Walker needs to be traded and they need to acquire some assets for him and start looking towards the future. They have a couple nice young players. You know, they have Miles Bridges. Malik Monk has had a better year this year than in years past. They don't really have a ton of young talent, but having a 30 year old Kemba Walker on your team and signing him to a Supermax contract this off season is just it's nonsensical. It, it makes absolutely no sense for the Hornets to keep Kemba Walker on a rebuilding team. Blow it up. Trade Kemba Walker. Get some young assets. Get some picks. So that's what we did. We know that the Dallas Mavericks called the Hornets already about Kemba Walker. So this is what that trade package would look like. The Hornets would get Dennis Smith Jr., a great young point guard who is looking for a more, uh, more ball-heavy role, which we would certainly get in Charlotte. 
Also send along Wesley Matthews, which would be a nice expiring contract for the Hornets in a couple of years, a 2020 first round pick, and likely another draft pick as well as a sweetener, maybe a, a late unprotected first round pick in a couple of years, or maybe a second round pick in this upcoming year's draft. Remember, the Mavericks do not have their first round pick this year due to their trade for Luka Doncic. However, they can still trade that 2020 first round pick since that 2019 pick was a draft day trade. So looking at the Mavericks lineup with Kemba Walker, Walker would be a perfect fit for this team. It would allow for a little bit more of a ball distribution between Harrison Barnes and Luka Doncic along with DeAndre Jordan. I think he would also be a great person for Jalen Brunson to learn behind. He's had a nice season so far in his first year with the Dallas Mavericks. I just think that adding Kemba Walker next to Luka Doncic gives you one of the best backcourts in the NBA and would most likely propel the Dallas Mavericks to a playoff spot, which we know was their goal coming into this year. Again, not having that first round pick. You got to make the playoffs or really this season is just for nothing. Again, one more time, head to chatsports.com slash bet. Use that promo code NBA120 for 120% deposit bonus. Ladies and gentlemen, the best gambling day of the year is coming up next week on Super Bowl Sunday. So get your deposits in, use that deposit bonus and make some money on Super Bowl Sunday.